Hey guys, um, it's Rachel here. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, all your support and everything. Um, it really does my heart glad and it really just thrills me that people are now loving the ministry that God has uh, put in me. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done. And I thank you for what you're about to do. Permeate the atmosphere. Do whatever you need to do in this moment in our time together. Lord God, I thank you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Speak to me. Speak through me today. Um, I was watching, I had such a busy week this week, and during all my busyness, I was watching, um, before I had to go out one day this week, I was watching a, um, video that had been on my watch later list for about, oh, about three, two or three years, and I was going through my watch later list, and I clicked on this video, um, and it was about this worship leader from, from Bethel, um, Bethel Music, which is, um, a worship, um, uh, a worship band, Anyway, Bethel Church is, um, I think they're located in L.A., the, the head church is, and, um, they have this, uh, music, and their music has gone all over the world, just like, um, my, what I call my home church, Elevation Worship, War Hill Song Worship. Uh, they're, they're a team like that, and this, this video was from 2017, and it was like a mini documentary about this, this, uh, person, I forget even her name, um, I'll post the documentary again so you can see it, I posted it before, but I'll, Post it again so you could see it. Anyway, in the documentary, she was talking about her time in San Francisco. And as many of you know, just like here in Toronto, uh, San Francisco has a huge LGBTQ uh, population. And she was talking about her experience there. And she she talked about uh, one time when, when she went there with a bunch of her... They were down there doing some ministry things. And she was talking about one time when she went to um, do ministry and, and she hid in the corner, um, on this, uh, mostly, um, in front of this, uh, place where LGBTQ people hang out, and, um, they were, um, and she was just there with her guitar, and they were there, and then this, um, and then the, 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 this, uh, uh, pro-LGBT group, uh, came up to them and started throwing things at them and all that. And she just started to sing very softly, Amazing Grace in the back. And, um, that calmed the whole atmosphere down. And then she said something about 
instead of instead of seeing the dark she said we often see the darkness in people we often see what they do wrong we often see their sin we often see what's reprehensible about them in society but she said she said in that moment i learned to call forth the light and that's what I want to talk to you about today. Calling forth the light. In Genesis, uh, one of the first things that God did before he created anything else was call forth the light. He didn't have to do anything. He didn't have to make anything he didn't do anything he didn't do anything with his hands all he did was call it forth and it was so any dark situation you're going through the lord said this morning call forth the light call forth the light um we don't ignore the darkness but we often um, give the darkness more credit, credit than the light. Um, but the Lord is saying today, call forth the light. Anything that you see that is of darkness, call forth the opposite. So if you have a son or daughter on drugs, don't focus on that because what you focus on gets bigger and maybe why that itchy was getting bigger is you're calling forth the darkness not the light god says call forth the light and um you you th you're dealing with job loss or your lack of finances or whatever call forth the light uh call forth a better financial future and when you're calling it forth um it it has to come with faith and it has to come with works but before even faith and works you need to see it and call things that be not as though they were any dark situation call forth the light the lord is saying any dark situation that you're seeing call forth the light he said that's what i need you to do because how 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 you see a thing is how you'll act in a thing so if you see a thing is dark you'll act like it's dark if you see it as light it'll it'll the situation may not not be light right now but you have to call it forth just like god did in genesis 1 god said let there be light and there was light i'm saying right now under the auspices of the holy spirit let there be finances let there be peace let there be joy let there be love let there be understanding. Let there be forgiveness. Of a Let there let there be love. Let there be joy. Let there be peace. Let there be family understanding. Let there be just anything light. And he's saying, call it forth. He's saying, you've been stuck in this thing for far too long. I need you to call forth the light. Don't call forth what you see. Call forth the opposite of what you see. Because calling for calling it forth will change. It may not change the situation, but it will change your perspective. And when your perspective changes, slowly the situation will change. Or maybe immediately or however um, long God wants it to last. God says, you have, you have not 
because you are not calling it forth. You are mired in what you see. But he's saying, I need you to call it forth. Um, and for some people, calling it forth may seem unrealistic. And, and to tell you the truth, it is unrealistic. It's unreal to call forth light when all you see is darkness. But he's saying, calling it forth is not um, stupid, it's not a stupid thing to do. It shows that you see past where you are. And the Lord says, the only way that you're going to get out of this funk that you're in, whether it be financial funk or whether it be a marital funk or whether it be a single funk or whether it be a uh, uh, whatever kind of funk you're in, is to call it forth. See past where you are and call forth what you see. Call it forth right now. Call forth healing. Call forth joy. Call forth forgiveness. Call forth that family that you see. Um, there is a, there is a married person right now under the sound of my voice. You've been trying for years. You you and your husband have been trying for years um, to get pregnant or have a baby. Like you've gotten to the point in your marriage where making love seems like a transaction, and you're so mired in oh, will I get pregnant, will I get pregnant, will I get pregnant, that your marriage is suffering. I don't know who I'm talking to. And the Lord says, call it forth. Call forth that baby. Call forth that loving marriage back again. Call it forth. There's somebody else who is at the, uh, at the point of dropping out of school all your dreams, everything, you're just at the cusp of greatness, but doors have been slamming in your face. Everything has been like, no, no, we don't need you. And the Lord says, before you drop out of school, before you give up on what he's called you to do, call it forth. Call it forth. Call it forth in the name of Jesus. Call it forth. And it doesn't even matter if you believe, if you, it, it doesn't even matter if you have faith right now for it. You may, you may have totally given up, but that's okay. Still, call it forth. Because, um, because even if you have a little bit of faith as, as um, the size of a mustard seed, it will happen. Just call it forth. I'm not saying name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. I'm saying um, call it forth, which means that calling it forth will still take work on your part. Call it forth is not saying let there be in there and there was without work. Calling it forth says to God that I'm here right now, but I see something different, and I call it forth. And while I'm calling it forth, I'm working. I'm not just calling it forth and sitting on my laurels and waiting for it to happen. I'm calling it forth and working towards it. And when you call it forth and work towards it, the Lord said, it will come to pass. Pass. God said, call it forth. Some of you are having visionary dreams. Some of you are prophets and afraid to speak prophetically. Some of you are financial wizards. Some of you have books inside you, but you're afraid to call it forth. 
the Lord says to call it forth right now. The Lord says, I need you to call it forth, even if you don't have faith for it, even if you've given up on it. I need you to call it forth, and with the calling it forth, you work towards whatever. Some of you have amazing dreams in your heart, and you're just um, not operating in them because you refuse to call it forth. In this case, silence is your enemy. You need to call it forth. Just like the Lord created the world by His speech, you create your world by your speech. Whatever comes out of your mouth, it may seem realistic, but it's not Godistic. It, whatever comes out of your mouth may seem realistic, but it's not Godistic. Um, what I mean by God, Godistic, it's not God's word. It's your words, and it's what you see. And I've been guilty of this. Up, to, up until this week, calling forth what I see for my, my life and not what God sees. But from, from this day, I'm going to endeavor to call forth my, my film production company, my book publishing company, and my music, and my music production company. I'm going to call it forth. I'm going to call forth my marriage, even though I'm single. I'm going to call it forth. The Lord saying to us all, call it forth. You've been silent and wallowing for too long. You've been living in secret for too long. The Lord says it's time for you to come out from your secrets, from your lies, from, from everything that the devil's been telling you and call it forth. It's time it's time for you to call it forth. Whatever you see in your head, whatever you see with God's heart for your life, call it forth. If you're if you're single and you see yourself married, call it forth. If you're broke and you see yourself financially stable, call it forth. If you see yourself healed and you're sick, call it forth. There is somebody with cancer right now. I don't know if it's a male or female um, who's, who's had chemo for a while. and The doctors just have very little hope for you. God is saying from your mouth, sister, brother, I need you to call for your healing. There are people right now in just all kinds of situations under the sound of my voice. And the Lord says to call it forth. Because what calling it forth does, first and foremost, um, is change your perspective. Calling it forth may not change the situation right away, and that's a warning that I need to give to you. Calling it forth may not change your situation right away, but it will change your perspective, and your perspective will change your attitude, and your attitude will change your actions, and your actions will change your situation. So that's what calling it forth will do. Calling it forth will, will uh, probably not change the situation right away. But your situation will change your perspective. Your perspective will change your attitude. Your attitude will change your actions. And your actions will change your situation. And that's how calling it forth will work. Calling it forth is not some magical thing that we just said, 
oh, I call it forth and it is. No, calling it forth first changes your perspective. And then when you change your perspective, your situation will eventually change. Or sometimes God in his grace will change immediately, but it is up to God to do that. But, but calling it forth will first change your perspective on your situation. And that's what calling it forth will do. Calling it forth is not just a magical uh, um, potion that you just uh, drink and I call it forth and poof, it's there. No, calling it forth will take work on your part. It will take sacrifice. It will take sweat. It will take blood. It will take tears. But at the end of the day, you will have exactly what God wants for you. And let me say this. God wants the very, very, very best for you. You may not think of it right now because... You may think that, that because of what's going on, that he doesn't want the best for you. But the Lord is saying right now that not only he wants the best for you, but you will have the best if you call it forth and change your perspective. And a change of perspective will change your life. I think a lot of us get mired in the negative because we are wired, I think, generally, um, because we were shaped, um, we were formed in sin and shaped in iniquity. So, I think we were wired generally to be negative. But the Lord's saying, He doesn't eat. He doesn't even want you to change your negative attitude. He's saying, call forth positivity. Call it forth. And eventually, your perspective will change. Like, if you're a negative person, and you see the glass half empty and everything is good, you don't have to, or every... It, sorry, everything is bad per se. You don't have to fake it, fake it till you make it. Oh, this is a great situation. It may not be great, but call forth the greatness in your situation. Call forth the greatness in yourself, despite what you see. You've heard that me say this. You've heard me say. There, there's greatness down inside of you, but call it forth. Calling it forth is not a, a feeling. Calling it forth is seeing what is in God's eyes for your life and seeing past how you see yourself. So if you're a negative person, you don't have to act positive. You just have to call it forth. You just say, this day will be better. I will come out of this. And it will change your perspective. And your perspective will, will change your attitude. And your attitude will change your actions. And your actions will change your life. Will change your situation. And it will bring life. And calling it forth will, will bring life to every dead situation. If you call something forth, it's like Jesus saying, Lazarus, come forth. When Lazarus uh, died and his sisters were hysterical, Jesus wasn't worried. Jesus he cried for a bit because Lazarus was dead and Lazarus was his uh, his friend. 
But what did Jesus do? Jesus called it forth and he sprung to life. The reason why there's so many dead things in your life is you won't call it forth. You're seeing your you're seeing your life as a dead thing where, where your life is a living thing. And the Lord is saying, I need you to call it forth. Everything that has died in your life, I need you to say, finances come forth, healing come forth, husband come forth, wife come forth. And it'll change your perspective. And your perspective will change your attitude, and your attitude will change your actions, and your actions will change your life and your situation. And I, yes, Lord, thank you. So we call forth every dead thing to rise to life. Every dead thing, every dead dream, every dead marriage, every dead family, we call it forth. And some of you have been ignoring the situation like it, and hoping that it will get better. Don't hope that it will get better. Call it forth. The Lord saying, don't hope that it will get better. Oh, I hope this will get better, whatever. Call it forth, the Lord is saying today. Call it forth. Call forth your change of attitude. Call it forth. Call forth your change of any changes in your life that you want to see, even while, while you're drinking as an alcoholic, call forth your healing from that. Call forth your, call forth, he says, call forth the life that I've shown you. Call forth the person that I've shown you. But he said one caution, make sure the life that I've shown you is the one I want you to have and not the one you want. Because a lot of people can call forth the, the one that they want, but it's not the one God wants for them. But they think that they're supposed to have this life because it's what they want. But the Lord says, it's not what I want. Call forth what Ask me what my heart is for your life, what my thoughts are on your life, and call that forth. Because at the end of the day, it will be so much better, brighter, bigger than what, what you could ever imagine. He said, whatever I've set for you, call it forth. Call forth. A moment where you don't have depression. Call it forth. Call forth that job. Call forth that marriage. Call it forth. Ask me what I see for your life. And then when I show you a picture, call it forth. He said, you don't even have to have faith for it. He said, if you don't, if you don't have faith right now, that's okay. I'll take you. Uh, who, I'll take you where you are, and then we'll work on it together. Just call it forth. He said, it, even if you don't feel it, call it forth. Even if you think it's over, call it forth. Even if you think it's too late, you're too old, whatever, call it forth. Call it forth. Call it forth anyway. And he said, I need you today to call it forth. Whatever you see, whatever dead dreams, like some of you have had dead dreams for years and you think it's totally in the toilet. People have been, been saying, oh no, 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 we don't want you and you've tried and you've tried and you've tried, you went to school. You try, you try to be accepted by this group. He's like, stop 
trying to be accepted by people and groups and different things and call it forth. He said, calling it forth takes work, but it takes work under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. The work that it will take after you call it forth will be God-directed work. And God-directed work, you'll still have to work, but it won't uh, be pushing you down. It won't be draining you. Some, 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 somebody on the under the sound of my voice, you're working towards your dreams, and it's draining you. But he's saying, call it forth, and the work it will take will not drain you, it will invigorate you. Some of you, why you are drained is because it's draining you. It's, you're not calling it forth, you're just working. And he's saying, I do, I do not want my people to just work. I want everything that my people do to be divinely orchestrated work. And he said, I need my people to call it forth. He says, I need the church to rise and stop complaining and stop uh, admiring themselves and religiosity and things that I've set forth. He's saying, he's saying to some pastors today, he's saying, I've given you a new vision. And you've been scared to act on it because it's so above the norm. But he's saying, call it forth. Call it forth. And if you're not confident as a pastor to do, to do whatever, to flip the script and do things differently, he's saying, just call it forth. Just say, I see this. And call it forth aloud. Call it forth aloud. He's saying, there is so much inside of you for your ministry, for your congregation, for your church. But I need you to call it forth. He says, I need you to call it forth. He says, what kind of church do you see for yourself? What kind of church do you see? What kind of what kind of innovative things do you see? He's saying, I've given those to you. Those are not stupid. Those are not those are not even you. Have you ever for pastors again, have you ever been preaching a sermon and something comes up out of you and you don't really know? You're saying, I wish we could do this. I wish we could do that. Well, the Lord is saying, saying, stop wishing and do it. And if you don't have the money to do it, call it forth. Call it forth. And resources will come and everything will come. Because all of that you see for your ministry, all of that you see for the ministry he's, he's given you. It's not you talking about it. It may seem like you, but it's something he's put down in your spirit. It's not just some stupid thing that that you just said in a sermon one time for an example or whatever. It's something down inside of you that is deep down there that he wants you to accomplish. And he's saying, Pastor, I know you're scared. He's saying, I know that this is a new thing for you. He's like, but whatever I purposed for you, you, you can do it. Because I am with you. I've got your back. You cannot fail at this. And even if you do, that failure will lead to something even greater. And... The Lord is showing you a ministry and you're just like and you're just like oh that's just a servant example I'm here to tell you 
that it is not just a sermon example. Sometimes as preachers, as leaders, God will speak to us on the pulpit about something that he wants us to do as well as to the people. And your calling, sir or ma'am, goes far beyond preaching. Your calling goes more, more, your calling is more amazing than you could ever dream. And all those things that he's permitted you to do that you're scared and you're like, like, I don't have, I don't have the confidence to do this or I have a church of 50 people. How are we going to do this? Um, he'll say, it's not your business, pal. It's your business. It's your business to do it. He's saying, uh, he's saying, just say yes, and I will send the resources. And call it forth. Call forth what you see. Call forth all those dead visions and those dead dreams. Call forth the light in every dark situation for your children, for your church, for your ministry, for your people, for everyone that you see, just call it forth. Don't focus on whether it's negative or whether it can be can be done. That's not your issue. That's not even your problem. That's his problem. That's his issue to figure out. What you have to do is call it forth. Call it forth. And remember what I said about calling it forth. It doesn't change things right away, but it changes your perspective, and your perspective will change your attitude, and your attitude will change your actions, and your actions will change your life. That's what calling it forth will will do, and it will be it will be work. It will be you and God working together, but it will be God ordained work. And it won't even feel like work. it will just be something that you're purpose to do. And it will, uh, dare I say, feel easy. And people will be like, how are you doing that? Because it's God-ordained work. And everybody's God-ordained work is different. So what you see another person do is not for you. Ask for God's heart. For your life, not anyone else's life. Because when you see somebody's life and say, oh, I want that, that's not your lane. That's a lane that God has purpose for them to walk in, not you. You need to find your lane. You need to find your greatness. You need to know that he accepts you and he loves you. And he will give you the resources for what he's purpose for you to do and he's saying call it forth thank you jesus for what you've done thank you jesus for setting us free lord god thank you jesus for saying we don't have we don't have to change all we have to do is call it forth and calling it forth will lead to change because it will change our perspective our perspective that will change our attitude and our attitude will change our actions. Thank you, Lord, for for being with us today and speaking so powerfully. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. I call for healing. I call for light. I call for deliverance. I call it for. 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 I call it for, I call it for.
I call.